not all real estate is created equal. The property in some parts of the country may be a better bet than in others. Jeffrey Olin is here to share his outlook. He's president and CEO of Vision Capital. It manages real estate-focused vision opportunity, opportunity funds. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Uh, and we should note that your funds, uh, and this fund I think in particular uh, is an award-winning one. You've won, I think you just Eight. won again the Morning Star Award. And yes. You win the KPMG Award. Describe the, the focus of it uh, and to what extent it's entirely real estate driven. We are focused on real estate, but on publicly traded real estate. So our team has a lot of direct real estate ownership, management, development experience, but our funds are focused on publicly traded real estate, long and short, so we can take advantage of situations we think are going to decline in value, <laughs> and we can and do take concentrated positions in our best ideas. So give us uh, your snapshot of the Canadian market right now. Um, some people saying, you know, less than terrific economic growth projections going forward. Surely that should be pushing back on REITs and uh, real estate prices. I think the context of your question is particularly relevant. What kind of real estate, where, and what type of entity you're investing in? So we have a concentration of our portfolio in Alberta. Uh, in the last year, you had 165,000 people population growth in Alberta. To put that in context, that's more than Ontario, which has over three and a half times as many people. We are invested primarily in rental residential. You have 1% vacancy rates in Calgary and Edmonton together with the population growth, and a lot of that is immigration, migration, and those people tend to live in apartments, and there's no rent controls there. And thirdly, the type of entity. Uh, as I mentioned, we invest primarily in publicly traded securities. There's such a fervor, such a, a, a thirst for yield that entities that don't pay yield are often overlooked, and they're not reliant on capital markets. So to the extent that you see a deteriorating environment in capital markets, those entities are in better positioned to either grow or buy back their shares and increase value for the remaining shares. Real estate is one asset class that in a rising rate environment is seen as risky. Can you describe how, what your strategy is as we look, who knows when rates will rise? We know that that's the direction they're likely to go. How do you manage a portfolio like this in the face of that? Firstly, at all times, and maybe there's a lag, but supply and demand fundamentals trump interest rates. And you see that in the 1980s. Forget 1981 when you had 18, 20% interest rates. 1988, 89, you had 10% long-term rates in the U.S. And property prices were going up because you had tight rental market conditions and an inflationary environment. And real estate as a hard asset benefits from that. So we don't see inflation right now, but those that believe all this printing of money ultimately leads to it could be very bullish in real estate. And if, yeah, if you see the 10-year in the U.S. going 4.5%, 5%, I'd be concerned. We don't see that. Uh, we do see the 10-year going up, um, but that's why we are stock pickers and focus on markets and supply and demand. What do you think of uh, real estate companies south of the border? Canadians on a buying binge right now. Um, is that the? I, I guess the premise is there's going to be more economic growth there than in Canada. Do you buy that? I think that's been the case. I think the, the, what Canada has really benefited from is really strong employment growth. The number one factor to supply and demand economics is employment growth, not the unemployment rate but employment growth, and we've certainly outpaced the U.S. in that regard. The U.S. is catching up, and so if you see that continues, it bodes well, and we can and do invest in the United States, and we've increased our investment there. You mentioned that you're long short, uh, so you would be then short a publicly traded vehicle. What, when, what do you decide? What's kind of the tipping point to decide something is overvalued in that way? Two primary things. One is the supply and demand fundamentals, yeah. and secondly is valuation. Uh, so supply and demand right now, we see Toronto and Calgary office markets. You have 7 million square feet under development here in downtown Toronto, 5 million under development in downtown Calgary. At best, half is pre-leased. Uh, we're concerned about rent pressure in those markets. And so then we'll look at the underlying valuation. And if things are trading near their net asset value and we think those rents are going to decline, that would be a good short candidate. I know it's not exactly your area of expertise, but you're thinking real estate all the time. So put on your big picture hat and tell me, what do you think about the condo market here in Toronto and cities like Vancouver? I mean, people are speculating. In Montreal. We're in bubble territory. <laughs> you know, do you buy that? Do you think that's a, uh, a concern we should Let me deal with these quickly. Toronto, I was premature on that. I've been calling for correction for five years. So he's either wrong or premature for the first two years. I've been right for the last three years. Prices are coming down. They have come down. They will come down. Developers are lying. Prices are coming down. Uh, to me, any market that had 80% of buyers being non-owner occupied, uh, where they're going to rent them out maybe five years ago, you got some positive net rental spread. Last three years, there's been none. 
Having said that, we haven't had apartments built in Toronto for 40 years because of rent control. So there's real demand for rental of these units. That's going to provide some cushion. I don't think there'll be a crash. I think there'll be a correction. Mm -hmm. Montreal increasing supply, some concern there. All right. Jeff, great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Jeffrey Olin is president and CEO of Vision Capital Corp. Coming up.